Hey guys, welcome back. In my last video, I talked all about Cesium, using Cesium in Unreal Engine. For those of you who are not aware, Cesium is a plugin or a tool used in Unreal in which you can stream in information from Google Maps and use all of their information for your own content within Unreal. It could be a game, creating an environment or a world for your game, or it could be content in terms of uh, animating a camera in a sequencer and rendering out footage for your content. In today's video, I want to talk about actually rendering. You see, I didn't realize that that video would be so popular because I got a number of questions from people asking me how to resolve some of the issues that they're facing. I've been working on my own shots, and you can see one is behind me right here, of Washington DC, in which I'm doing a number of different flyovers and different angles, even some cameras coming from space really fast. And I ran into a number of problems, and it took me about two weekends to figure them out. I figured out some workarounds and some solutions. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing those secrets with you all. So if you like to see this and you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button and like this video. Buckle up, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you, this is a, a camera animated coming down from space. And this whole area right here is District of Columbia, Washington. That's the National Mall there, the White House, the Capitol. So, You'll see here, see how it's tiling? So you're seeing blue tiling and then it's like, it's loading and streaming in more information, but it's really slow on the way it loads in. If I bring the uh, cursor all the way back to the front of the timeline, you see how these colors are different? It's more bluish here and then a greener here. Well, that's actually a major problem when it comes to rendering because sometimes you see that in the renders and it just, it looks like crap and it's just not suitable for a professional level video when you're seeing all of this. In my previous video, I told you guys to use Cesium Sun Sky and add that in. Well, don't add that in. In fact, delete it. And if it doesn't delete properly, I recommend that you just rebuild your new level and use only Unreal Engine's native atmosphere and lighting. So uh, you'll find you know the directional light, the exponential height fog, the atmosphere, the skylight, and the volumetric cloud. This is how you're going to resolve that. Because if you put in Cesium Skylight, Unreal Engine is going to be confused and it's going to cause a lot of problems. So I'll show you how much better it looks. Look how great it looks when you use the exponential height fog, uh, the uh, Unreal Engine's native sky atmosphere. The reflections look a lot more realistic on the rivers and the lakes uh, as if you're really on a plane. And then the volumetric cloud. It just looks so much better, guys. I mean, this looks like a storybook um, movie a little bit. Like, once upon a time, or it, it all began in Washington, D.C., and then we're flying in here. And, I mean, this is, this costed nothing, guys. Like, literally, it was a tool, a plug-in. And 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you would have had to pay big bucks to get the shot from a visual effects artist. I mean, how cool is that, right? And you can animate it as long as you want. Okay, so that was the first trick. Don't use Cesium Sun Sky, use the native uh, tools. Okay guys, so here's the second issue uh, when it comes to rendering. So you'll notice that even though you have, like for instance, I have this level, this shot already uh, loaded in my sequencer. So it's a shot where we go from the White House down Pennsylvania Avenue, which is the main avenue in Washington. And then we're gonna go fly right over the Capitol, and then we're at the Library of Congress, these three buildings here where they keep a lot of the records. And this is a shot that I wanted to render. And the problem that I was having was this. There was always delay in the streaming of the information, of the content. And I wanna show you that it has nothing to do with the actual quality of the, um, the, simultaneous, the maximum space error quality. So for example, I'm gonna click on this tab right here and in the search bar I'm gonna write in maximum and then right here maximum screen space error that's the actual metric or parameter that we use to have the maximum quality of tiles or geometry in the world so the higher number the lower the quality the lower the number the better the quality and that really depends on how much computing power you have and how many applications you have running right now I'm down to a two because I don't notice much difference between a two and a one. 
I can set it to one right now and we can look at the difference. I don't think there's going to be much difference. But the point is, is that these are all, all these parameters are set to their maximum quality here. And that has nothing to do with the load times for when it comes to the rendering. It's still delayed. And so if I were to go and hit render this right now, you're going to see all these artifacts. You're going to see this low quality buildings that look like, you know, like a bad 90s video game here. Um, so here's the solution, guys. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Movie Render Queue. And this is the shot that I'm going to render. I already have some preset rendering configurations uh, to load from, to choose from within Unreal that I have already pre-installed. And I'm just going to choose this one that I've already chosen here. It's the EXR AOV. And so if I go ahead and click on that, it's really simple stuff. So the EXR is just a zip file. And the, the console variables are the same that I had in my previous video that I showed you guys. But the main difference, the secret to having perfect renders and perfect loading times when it comes to rendering and streaming the information is right here. Anti-aliasing, you're going to go to advanced and it's going to say engine warm up count. So you need to give lots of time for the engine to warm up and load in and stream in all the content information before you start rendering your first frame. That's how it's done. So if you have a really like wide uh, landscape photo like this one or a landscape shot, like in this case, we got a foreground, a background and a mid ground here. This stuff in the background is going to be last to load. So I'm going to have to make my warm up count rather high. So I'm going to go to anti-aliasing and I'm going to set this up at 6,000. Now those are 6,000 frames, so they're not 6,000 minutes. So don't worry, this is not going to take forever. It's no big deal. Put it up at something high like that, 6,000. Click accept. And then I have a directory. Let me just make sure it's going in the right directory here. Yeah, it's versioning up. Okay, so that's great. Then I'm going to click on render. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what happens here. So you're not even seeing any of the frames yet. Previously, if you did not have this engine warm up frames, it would start rendering and you would see like the worst quality and you wouldn't be able to stop it. It wouldn't improve at all. So we're just going to let it do its thing. Warm up at 6,000 frames. And after it starts, uh, after it's completed those frames, you're gonna see the first frame come in and everything is gonna be loaded uh, wonderfully. Okay guys, so there it is. Um, you can see the quality is much better now after 6,000 frames of engine warm up. So it's starting on the first frame right now and uh, it looks amazing. Now the backside here is still oh, poor quality and so is that over there, so, which means in order to fix that, I'm going to have to put the frame, uh, the amount of frames needed in the engine warm up closer to about 8,000 or 10,000, but that'll solve it. It just means we got to wait maybe about another five minutes or so to make that happen. So I want to show you guys one more thing now. You can see here that um, the beginning of the sequence and the middle of the sequence is fine. All the tiles are loaded in correctly. And then as we get to the capital here, you can see that it doesn't look right. So this is called the last frame problem. It's a per frame loading problem that's specific to the final seconds of the cinematic. So you can see this occurs because Cesium's tile streaming system is always looking ahead along the camera's path to load tiles. And at the very end of this sequence, there's no more future, so to speak, to look at. And the system hasn't had enough time to fully load the high detail geometry for those final few frames before the render process captures them. So the solution for this is to simply extend the sequence timeline. So if your last keyframe is at 10 seconds, let's say, make the sequence 15 seconds long. So that's another uh, 120 frames. So the camera will stop at 10 seconds, but the engine will continue to tick and Cessium will have those extra five seconds or 120 frames to load the final high detail tiles for the camera's last position. And here is the final shot, guys. Isn't that stunning? Look at that. That's amazing. 
So all the buildings are loaded in correctly, as well as the buildings near the Capitol and the Library of Congress. So there you have it, guys. Those three things will get you your perfect shot in Unreal Engine using Cesium. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.